I was always looking for a creative outlet. I was doing everything. I was doing woodworking, macrame, um, any course that happened at the college, I was taking the courses. I was doing jewelry making, picture framing, photography, everything you could think of. And I never really found that creative outlet I was looking for, although I was doing a lot of beautiful work in macrame and um, carpentry and sewing and painting. I never quite found what that outlet that I was looking for. And one day, a girlfriend, I had thrown a bridal shower for her, and as a thank you gift, she came in with this bar of handmade soap. And when she put it in my hand, I, it was one of those moments that you just almost feel like it's life-changing. I grew up on Haida Gwaii. I was born and raised, um, and my mother is First Nations. My father is German and Scottish. I grew up in a very artistic family, which I was very lucky to uh, grow up watching my cousins carving totem poles and painting, you know, Haida art. And I think that was where I knew that there was something there that I wanted to be a little bit artistic. I always wanted to make soap that had some kind of a, a story or something behind it. And my mother, being First Nations, was the one that said to me, you can tell your stories through soap. I think one of the reasons I love soap making so much is there is something nostalgic about fragrance and, uh, and then you start adding color to a fragrance and uh, when, when it, it always takes you back to your childhood somehow or reminds you of somebody important from your childhood. Like being on the boat with my uncle on Haida Gwaii and we'd have breakfast on the boat. So I had a, a soap I called breakfast on the boat that was oatmeal and creams and coffee and honey and syrup and everything in this it kind of embodied a childhood memory and uh, the fluidity of the motion and the soap and everything comes from what I witnessed growing up on Haida Gwaii. The water, the ocean, the sky, the smells. This one is called With Glowing Hearts and it is a maple syrup soap with a maple syrup fragrance. When we were making these bars as well as the, um, the candles, we craved pancakes and bacon for a week. <laughs> Evoking that emotion behind uh, a bar of soap so, so somebody can understand that to me it's not just a bar of soap, it's not just the, the colors or whatever, that there's an emotion, that there's a thought behind it, that there's a story behind it. And people love it when they pick up, say, my full moon soap. And I'll do a full moon uh, soap only on the day of the full moon. There's just something about creating the full moon soaps on the day of the full moon that kind of gives me an energy. We have so many legends and myths around the moon um, in our modern day society as well as our cultural um, uh, stories and legends and stuff like that, that there's just something that gives me energy and inspiration and I do honestly feel more energized on the day of the full moon. This is called the Hada Potlatch. I would consider it my signature bar, the Raven Song signature bar. When I was originally inspired to do a potlatch bar was for my uncle's potlatch on Haida Gwaii. He is our hereditary chief. And we're from the Raven clan of Skidans, and he was having a potlatch to announce his successor for chieftainship. I've always wanted to do um, a soap that had the red, black, and white, the traditional First Nations colors and I wanted it to be very graphic. It took me about eight years to finally come up with a formula that I do use for the potlatch soap and it was really important to me to come up with something that spoke to me and spoke to our culture. Potlatches are typically thrown by the chief and it's to show um, power and strength and it's all about gift giving. The chief and their family have to give gifts to all of the guests that come to that potlatch. Um, historically, it would be carving totem poles and carving um, canoes and doing pelts and it would be everything that the chief owns that they give away. 
what he's trying to show is the strength and the power of his family to rebuild from nothing. It's sharing culture and traditions mostly that, that I love and, um, and the inspiration behind the art. I had so many people say to me, oh, when you take your art and turn it into your job, it's not the same. To me, it's not really a job. It's just my passion. It's just creating what I love every day. If you have the passion for your, your art, whatever it is, whether it's photography, sewing, making so if you have that passion and you want to go for it I would say do it it doesn't feel like work to me